to reaching Bella Crafts. Hope you're all well. So, um, no, you're not in the wrong place. This is definitely the interactive journal video with Rachel Bella Crafts. Um, I know this is not my usual thing on my desk, but I just wanted to share a little something with you before I go on today. Um, we've actually had, um, well, I've had a brilliant time since I started my new job, and I'm not sure if I've mentioned uh, once before, um, the one young lady that I work with, she's our fundraising officer. Well, she actually finished working with us today, uh, and bless her heart, I was actually up last night quite late making her a journal to uh, take in and give to her today as a farewell gift um, and when I got in she'd actually gone and bought me a present so um, I just wanted to show you how thoughtful my colleague is so this is my my little bag that I had it in and she knew I'd want to use that to do something else and I have these lovely uh, card from her with this bit of a little charm on and um, this envelope again which she knows I'll be able to use but wait for this look what she went and found for me we've got a um an antique shop in our town and uh, literally it is actually just up the road i've got to be honest i haven't been in there as much as i thought i would be since starting this job but um she found this beautiful tin for me in there which is full old and it is lush and look at that but inside this is the best but inside she'd then gone and bought for me these beautiful books so i've got this one here with all these lovely images in um, again, you know, these lovely pages, but we love these um, Observer's books. And then she also got me one of these. And it's chock-a-block full of um, collector's cards. The whole thing is complete. Um, she absolutely did not have to do that. My goodness, we were giving her things today because she was leaving us. But, um, oh my gosh, she's just so thoughtful. So that absolutely made my day. And then to top it all... To top it all, we had our fate last week and I actually was modelling, <laughs> less modelling, just wearing. My, um, I got a, um, a top that's actually a design of, uh, it's the William Morris design. Uh, and lo and behold, what did I also pull out of the box today, but this beautiful mug with a William Morris um, pattern on it. And incidentally, I have a calendar on my desk at work and this month's pattern was actually this today and she hadn't even noticed that it was there. So isn't it funny, the things that we look at and we don't realise that we're taking it in. So there we are. So that was just my little bit of lovely news for the day. Right, let's crack on. Um, because as you hear, my voice is back, thank goodness. Um, and we've got lots and lots to do. So when I last was with you for the, um, the collaboration, and obviously I'm working on the journal that we're going to be uh, putting out for a giveaway. Um, when I last saw you all, I showed you my lovely journal cover with its removable fancy cover. So uh, thank you for all your lovely comments and um, the likes on the video and uh, the great feedback. Really appreciated that. Um, I really enjoyed making this actually. Um, it was quite a trial because I wasn't very well at the time, but um, it was actually what I needed. I really, really enjoyed just getting a bit messy and trying something different and not being afraid to um, do something a little out of the norm. So it's been great having your feedback. Really appreciate that. And you'll now see why I felt necessary to make a cover that I could take off because when we're going to now look at obviously putting signatures in, I wouldn't want to be crushing uh, what's on the front of there. Um, and it's just nice to be able to lay the book down flat. So we are going to be looking at what we're going to put in the signature today. I have a huge array of um, choices of papers and pages and things on my desk, which I'm going to very, very quickly go through with you now. Um, and then we'll look at putting the signature together. So these here are my kit pages and I've printed these kit pages in just under A5. So what I've done is I've printed them two to a page and then I've put them back to the printer and done the back as well with the other side of the kit uh, pages. So I've literally taken all of the pages there and there's a nice little selection then of, of the different pages and one thing and another. So that's that. So they're there ready to go in. And I printed them half size because full size was never going to fit in the journal. So that being the reason why I uh, printed them out half size. So I intend to um, obviously fold them in half and they will then provide us with a splash of colour, a splash of pattern, but it won't dominate the, um, the journal. So they're going to be in there at about that size. So I, I really, really wanted to be able to just add a splash here and there. I didn't really want to cut them down. 
Um, and I thought, you know, I, I quite like them as they are with the images on. So I thought the next best thing to do in that is to literally just print them half size and then as if they were going to go in a mini journal and I can put them in in between all the other pages and they'll just add a splash of what is um, my little bit of botanical in there. But that then allows me the freedom then to put um, other pages in. So let's have a quick look. Sorry about the stretching. Look at my top's all fluffy. It's been so cold in work today. I've had a, <laughs> a jumper on that I obviously is new, I think. I haven't washed it yet. It's like, this was a lovely white undertop early and it's now absolutely covered in fleece. But never mind, this is warm. Okay, so what have I got here? I have got here a selection of um, Edith Holden pages. Of course, you can't have a botanical journal without some botanical pages, can we? And who better to do botanical pages than Edith Holden? So I've got a little selection there that I will choose um, from. I, I did come across this image and I quite like that because I've actually got eggs images like that in my kit. So that's going to have to feature some way as will the daffodils because obviously they are a national flower and they are in full bloom at the moment. In fact, I've got a jug of them on my desk in work. So daffodils, little eggs definitely going in. Um, then I've also got this lovely page here. Now, this is um, definitely, again, a botanical book page. Now, I know that these are summer colours because um, I can see that because obviously the book they've come out of, it talks about July. But I just love the colours. And I think, again, it goes with the kit. It's got the blues, it's got the greens, it's got the pinks. So I like that. And it's not, they're not big, big flowers. It's not too overwhelming. So I'm going to try and put that in as well. I have also then got a selection of um, French dictionary pages, actually. That's what these are here. So um, I think these are quite nice to add in. They're always nice to have a little bit of a um, another language in, in your journal, just to add a little bit of uh, variety, maybe. Um, so we'll have a little look through that. Obviously, I can only check the words on these so far because I don't actually speak much French. Um, however, one good thing about using really old books is... Um, from a dictionary perspective, you shouldn't come across anything too, you know, inappropriate in there. I would like to think anyway. Well, I hope that's the case because I really am not going to be able to read all of those words. I may have to get my 12-year-old down because I think he's doing French in school at the minute. <laughs> um, I've also then got um, a page from an old accounting um, uh, textbook, an old you know, college textbook. But I quite like the, the little, you know... The little journal entry things on there so i thought they might be quite nice you know with botanical not only does it mean plants but it's also kind of like can be a little bit about the study of things can't it um i've also got this rather large page of greek um book page as well so we might try and pop a bit of that in there so that's like bringing a bit of variety um i've also got some pages here that i have printed from the kit in large size just in case i want to put anything in that is just about because i'm not too worried about cutting these down because I'm not like losing any of the imagery on that. So uh, brown paper bag is a must have. I'm keeping that to one side because I'm going to do something with that um, probably my next video. And we're going to be going back to an earlier um, collaboration to talk about that. Then I have got some um, handmade paper. So this one is, is quite a, an earthy brown colour. So I'd like to have a se small section of that in there if I can. Um, another thing that's great to put in to your um, botanical journals, well, any journal, but I'm going to put it into my botanical journal, is vintage ephemera. Now, I've got some old um, invoices and this is an old duplication sheet from um, from an old ironmonger's shop um, from in England somewhere in Huddersfield back in the 1930s. Um, yeah, they're both actually from 1931. How random is that? There we go. Uh, so I'd like to try and incorporate those if I can, because I, I really like the, the print and the text on this, um, the sharpness of it, and just, you know, the flicks and the ticks. And of course, it's actually got a, um, a watermark on there as well, a raised one um, from a stamp. I can't think what the word is, but yes, I like that. Uh, I like that very much. And the pink, again, just a bit of a colour change. Um, I've got one of these rationing forms. I've used one of these before. Um, and again, it's nice because if you do want to write in the journal, I just quite like this, you know, you've got the options here. So obviously that would have to be cut down. I have got um, an old message form again from, um, I think they're from World War II actually, these pages. Uh, but that can be cut down. I have got um, an old original um, diary page, <coughs> oh, excuse me, 
from a diary, which I'm assuming was probably for 1909, because you've got the calendar for 1908 and the calendar for 1910. Um, and they tend to do that, don't they, diaries? Trend of the year before, current year and the year after. So um, that's quite an interesting page. And not only that, but on the other side, you've got all the information about that day, you know, <laughs> the modern day postage um, prices. One thing that's got our old pricing system on there um, and the old weight system as well before um, the metric change that we had here in Britain. So I just think that would bring up a little bit of interest. Now, I also pulled out uh, from my stash um, some old advert pages. Now, I quite like this one because it's got garden tools on there. And, you know, taps and things like that. So I thought that could be quite interesting. Um, so, But obviously, if I pop this in, it's going to have to go in um, of a sideways orientation for it to fit. Um, and then again, this page here has got um, the discount table on it. I'm not entirely certain what that means. Probably, I think if you... Oh, I can see what it is now. Right. So this is if they were having a discount in the shop, like 25% off. And it would tell you then um, what the discount would be. On, on items if they were on sale in the shop. Well, that's good, isn't it? So, yeah, and then also on this page here, again, we've got another nice little grid on here. So I thought that these might come in quite useful if I wanted to just, you know, pop them onto a page rather than using the whole thing as just popping it in as a book page. Um, so again, that's, that's another option. And I also like the colour as well, because again, it's bringing out the blues that are in that kit. Um, now, I got a bit cheeky here when I was working on another project the other day and I did actually pinch half of this page. This was a page that I did, I was just trying to have a play about with the, um, uh, what's it called? The, uh, <laughs> I can't think of the word. Embossing, the embossing machine. Um, I've been having some problems with my actually, it, it wasn't doing it very well, so I was having to keep packing it. It's, it's like an automatic one. I bought it second hand, I did off uh, Facebook Marketplace. Um, and you obviously have to put the plates one on top of the other, and then you put the embossing folder in, don't you, with the card in, but it wasn't like compressing it enough to make the print, so I was having to pack it then with various layers of um, cardstock just to get it to work. So I was having a play the other day and then I decided to do some splashing on the back with my watercolour pen, um, which I quite like the look of, but that's fine because I can cut that and we can still use this section here because I just love these swirly, swirly leaves. So that's another page. Again, I've got a few other bits and pieces to go in. Um, we'll see how we get on. I'll see how much, maybe we won't put the rat trap in. That's Mm, but I do like, again, this font. So perhaps we'll use bits and pieces of this. Because I don't know, there's just something about it. I think it's quite, you know, I don't know. just speaks botanical to me. I don't know why, because none of these words, I don't think, are anything related to botanical. But I just like the font. So I'm going to go with that for a minute. And I love this building. Look at this. Isn't that lovely? Um, I've also got this old diary page from the same shop. Um, dated 1876. And this is people's, I think it's the accounts book actually. So these are outstanding accounts. And obviously when they've been paid, then they put a little cross to it. But again, I just thought that was really interesting. And I do like a bit of history in my journals. Um, we'll come back to that. Uh, again, I've got another bit of, uh, this is the actual, oh yes, it was 1909, that diary. There we are. So this is diary entries here and um, but they've used it for, again, cashing up. But again, I just thought this was really interesting to add in. So some of those will make the cut, some won't. Obviously the book is only so big. Um... Then, what else have I got here? So, um, I've pulled some of these just in case I couldn't find coffee dyed paper, but I think they're going to be all right for that. This is some paper that I made um, late last year using blackberries. I'm sure they were blackberries. Um, and it just came out with this beautiful blue colour. I hope you can see the blue on that because it is lovely. Um, and I think that's quite an interesting page. So, we might use some of that paper. I then last week also spent a bit of time, um, I took tracing paper and I simply took one of these bottles, here we go, and I filled it with some, um, you know, uh, tea mixture, so not no milk, <laughs> just hot water and a load of tea bags in a jug, let it stew and then I poured it into here when it was cold, because um, obviously don't put hot water in these because they will melt. And then I put a big plastic cloth out on the floor in front of our fire in the house and I laid all, all of these out and then I just sprayed them all. So this was tracing paper, but it's just dried with the most, I don't know, I think it's fascinating, the effect on there. And also, um, hear that twinkle. Ah, oh, that's just so lush, I love it. So we've got a good few sheets for that to have a play about with. Oh, I've got to went to town on those, didn't I? 
And then rather than get all up to my elbows in coffee dye in and trying to dry paper, I actually did some spraying. So I've just simply taken some pages of, um, you know, printing paper and I just lightly sprayed them because I thought I was just going to try out a few different techniques. Um, I'm not saying they're finished. I may add a few bits and pieces to them. I may add some colour to them. Uh, we might get the watercolour brush out and try that on there. But um, yeah, I think sometimes we get a bit, you know, I know I always, oh, I'm, oh, let me start that again. I am sometimes guilty of overcomplicating things. And when I'm a bit pushed for time, um, it's good to know sometimes that there are other options because these pages are just as interesting as if they've been completely saturated and actually i quite like the speckled deckled look because it's not all just one color is it it's you know there's lots going on there so um i was quite pleased with how they came out and then of course i got a bit drippy and a bit messy then but again yeah i, I really like the effect and this one i love this one but the thing is imagine now stamping on top of these as well um i just think you're going to get a lot more um effects from it so i did try then um, a couple of things with these pages. So as you saw, I did try um, that one there that I did emboss. So I embossed this because that's what that was. But you see, from embossing, just lightly spraying, um, even then, it was really effective. And again, like I say, I tried then flicking um, my little watercolour pen brush thing at it. And again, it was just another effect. So then I had a little play about then with some texture paste. Um, because, and I'm looking around me to see if I can find the thing I'm about to tell you about. Is that it up there? No, oh, I tidied it away, look. See, this is the trouble when you tidy your room. No, I don't know what I've done with it. Well, basically, um, when I made the cover, I obviously had to cut out these flower die cuts. And the card that I cut them out of, I kept the, um, the card stock. It was a big 12 by 12 piece because obviously it had all the gaps in there. So then I used that then as a stencil to make some, to use some texture paste to make some uh, floral design. So um, I hope you can see these on there. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. I hope you can see them on there. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is take my watercolour brush after and just paint across them. So I don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to give it a go. Um, so that was another one there. Um, I mean, obviously they're not perfect, but... They don't need to be perfect, do they? Uh, this one I love. Now, this page I did actually put to the um, embosser with a embossing sheet that's meant to give a look of handmade paper. Um, I wasn't overly overwhelmed with the embossing, but after I then added um, this little design, I thought actually it looks quite cool. And then this final uh, example is... Um, where I've done the uh, textured paste stenciling on to some of the tracing paper that I um, sprayed. So again, that's left a really interesting kind of uh, finish, but I'm gonna try again later and just, um, like I said, try adding just a little bit of color with my watercolor brushes. So looking now at the size of the journal, um, one thing I wanna be really, really clear with myself about, because I do have a habit of over, um, overstuffing them. Um, for example, the one that I made for my colleague um, last night actually ended up with three signatures in it, you know, and it's not always practical. The thing is, we're going to be making stuff to go in here that is going to be quite chunky anyway, isn't it? Because obviously it's botanical and it tends to be quite thick and have a lot of substance to it. So I'm not going to go over the top. Um, and I also have to remember as well that I need to get them to fit because this is um, a smaller than standard size book. Um, so I'm going to go away now and cut and put everything into place, choose from a selection of what I've got here um, and see what fits. Put it all together because you definitely don't need to see me do that. You know how to put signatures together by now, guys, don't you? Um, and then I will be back to show you um, the finished signature and where we go from there. So we'll see you in a bit.
So there we go. For the time being, I have added the uh, two signatures into the book. I have put it in with just a, a temporary um, elastic binding, just so that I can, um, you know, have access to the pages, get them in and out if I need to, add things, take things away as, as we start to build the journal. Um, but at least with the elastic um, binding, it does give us that uh, element of flexibility, doesn't it? So um, I'm actually really quite pleased with what I've put together for the signatures they're quite um you know it's quite different to, to kind of how I normally would do it um but I wanted to give this style a try um and it's all about trying new things isn't it getting out of our comfort zone and you know um just seeing different ways in which that we can approach things uh it has more of a kind of junky feel if that makes sense you know a lot of this stuff is um you know reused uh, items from other places be it from books you know old invoices receipts um book pages things like that so um i'm looking forward to the challenge now of filling it and getting our ephemera in here and uh filling it with pockets and things and um taking the journal forward so yeah so that's kind of everything for today's video um what i would like you all to do first of all can i just say as well a huge thank you to everybody that's um already uh, donated to the fundraiser um, for uh, Site Camry, the um, site loss charity that I work with. Um, and obviously every one of you that has donated will be entered into um, the draw uh, to win this journal. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, um, as we are working on an interactive journal project, um, I'm going to just throw it out to you now as to what you would like me to show you um, in the next video. Um, obviously, you know, we've got lots of different tutorials going on now with our collaboration. Um, is there anything that you would specifically like to see me try um, to go into the um, the giveaway journal? So, of course, we've got our lovely cover that will slide onto the front here. Um, but what sort of things would you like inside? What would you like to see me um, have a go at? So, come on, chuck me a challenge. What, would, uh, what have you seen so far in the collaboration videos that you think, oh, let's see if Rachel can do that. Um, but yeah, pop a comment down below and I will give you two days. <laughs> That's all you're going to get um, to let me know. And then I'll crack on with that then and be back with whatever challenge you would like to set me. So um, yeah, it's a nice long bank holiday weekend. I think I've got time to, uh, you know, adapt something. Hopefully I'll have the resources here. So don't make it too complex, will you? But yeah, I'm open to a challenge. Um, so it'd be good to hear from you all um, what you'd like to see me do and what you'd like to see put into uh, the journal. And then I'll take your ideas and hopefully run with it. Um, thank you all so much for joining me today. Really appreciate you giving your time. It's lovely to be able to catch up with you all. Uh, and thank you also for all of your lovely comments of concern and get well wishes. Um, and I'm sure you'll all be relieved to know I'm back in full form now. Um, work is over. We have four days off. Yay! Thank goodness for bank holiday weekends, hey? Um, and yeah, no, it'd be lovely now to just have some time to celebrate the Easter um, Easter weekend with the family um, and with yourselves. So, um, so thank you very much. It was it was very kind of you all to think of me, and I appreciate your message messages. Um, so take care, everybody, and I will be back with you all very soon. And don't forget to leave your comments down below. Bye now.